Okay, in this video I want to show you how you can represent waves with wave fronts and with rays. These are <coughs> equivalent ways of representing, ray, um, representing waves. Often we use one method for one thing and another method for another thing, but they're actually interchangeable. So often we'll use rays with light because uh, that's a common way to think about it uh, but if we were drawing the waves we saw in a ripple tank we would we would probably use wave fronts uh, but the two methods are actually interchangeable so I want to show you um, how you can interchange them uh, and how they are the same thing so these are ways to represent any waves just to be absolutely clear on what's going on here okay wave fronts look a bit like this uh, this is a simulation of a ripple tank. Hopefully you've seen a ripple tank where there's um, a tray, a, thi a thin, thin tray of water and uh, you've got a dibber that dibs up and down. Um, either it's a, a straight line dibber like this or you can have little, um, little circular or spherical ball shaped dibbers that make different shape waves. But basically ripples pass along the surface of the water uh, and then these cast shadows, they project little bright and dark uh, lines onto the table below. Uh, you might be interested as to how water can cast a shadow given that it's clear. Uh, you might want to think about that. Anyway, these are wave fronts. What you're seeing here, these bright and dark things, are what we would call wave fronts, just so you know what they're looking like. Um, uh, and that's how they move. Well, maybe you've used a ray box um, at school. Okay, uh, It's a box that you plug into a power supply. And out of that, you get a ray of light. Whoops, not particularly straight. There we go. And if you were to direct that through a glass block, maybe the ray would do something like that. I don't know. Okay, so these are two different ways you've seen waves. Light you can think of as a wave. Uh, we see it often as rays if we use a ray box. But then water ripples are waves, and we see them doing this. What's the connection? Well, uh, I'm going to represent the same thing using wave fronts and with rays, and we'll start with this because it's simple. Okay, so let's say we've got our tank of water. This thing here is the dibber. Okay, so it's a bar, and it's moving up and down. So it's moving up and down, in and out of the the screen, as you can see it, and and the water is is in the plane of the screen. What you're going to see is ripples like this ripple 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 and so on now the distance by the way the distance between each of these ripples is one wavelength it's the distance from one peak to another peak okay so that's one wavelength and these ripples are going to be moving to the right along uh, along the water these are wave fronts now we could equally show the same thing using rays and the ray representation which you might think is weird to use would look like this the rays are showing the direction of motion of the waves that's what they're doing their arrows showing the direction the wave is moving okay so all across this the wave is moving to the right so the red things are a ray representation they're rays the blue things are wave fronts. Take a look at them. Is there anything you can notice? Maybe there is. Okay, let's move on. Uh, here's another situation um, in the ripple tank. Let's get the ripple tank and we'll go for a single source. This is now when you've got uh, a, one of those ball-shaped dibbers and it's just dibbing up and down in the middle of the, the ripple tank making these ripples that spread out in all directions. Remember what we're seeing here are peaks and troughs in the, in the water ripples. Okay? These are the bright and dark things are peaks and troughs. So these are wave fronts and again the wave front representation of a single source of waves. Uh, what colour did I do wave fronts in? Blue I believe. Let's do the source of waves in green or something. So that's the dibber that's going up and down. What you can see are wave fronts spreading out. Concentric circles. Once again, the distance between any two of these wave fronts 
is the wavelength. Okay. Now, what's the same situation? So, so I didn't really say anything about it previously here. You know, why was I using these rays? But we can think about a, a situation like this with light. A single source of light. So this is a single source of water ripples going in all directions. Well, a single source of light going in all directions, we would probably represent with rays, because we're familiar with using rays for light. For light, we'd say, well, there's rays of light going in all directions. Here they go. Rays of light spreading out in all directions, coming from this light bulb or whatever it is. Um, now I'm saying to you that these are both equivalent ways uh, of expressing the same thing. Okay, So waves spreading out from a point you could express with rays which indicate the direction the waves are moving or you could express with wave fronts which are linking peaks of the wave. Okay. They're both ways of expressing the same thing. Now, by this stage, you might be noting, noticing something about the wave fronts and the rays. Okay, so again, whoops, the rays are in red, the wave fronts are in blue. Same over here, rays in red, wave fronts in blue. You might be noticing that they're at right angles to each other. Okay, so everywhere you look, wherever a ray crosses a wave front, you'll see that it crosses it at 90 degrees. Have a look on this diagram here. Everywhere where a ray crosses a wave front, whoops, that's at 90 degrees. Same here. Anywhere where a ray crosses a wave front, it's at 90 degrees. So that's like one of the key things, which if you're making notes, I'd write that down. Okay? So wave fronts are always perpendicular. Are always perpendicular to rays full stop okay um, now we can extend this approach to then start thinking about all sorts of other stuff now I don't want to go through an exhaustive list uh, of all the different things here because it's good for you to think about them yourself so maybe I'll just do one let's do diffraction <coughs> now you've probably seen diffraction with um, a ripple tank you might have seen diffraction with light Okay, with a ripple tank, I can make diffraction happen here. If we go back to our, where's it gone? If we go back to these waves here, okay. If I want them to diffract, I'm going to make them go through an obstacle. Okay, so, yep, here we go. So I'm going to start drawing an obstacle in here, and you'll see that the waves are going to respond to that. So I've made an obstacle and the waves are passing through the middle of that gap and you'll notice that the waves diffract they spread out when they go through the gap now I'm going to represent this with wave fronts because that's what we're looking at uh, I'm also going to do it sideways just because that's the way I always do it so if I've got a gap and some wave fronts coming in I'm going to try to keep the spacing between them consistent because the spacing between them is a wavelength. Then I think it looks something like I can't remember exactly how much of it's spreading out. Maybe something like this. Okay, it's spreading out quite a lot. So notice I'm trying to keep my distance between my wave fronts the same consistent here and here and here and everywhere okay now how do you represent that with rays well remember the rays are always perpendicular to the wave fronts so if I start doing a ray here it's got to go across that at 90 degrees it's got to go across that at 90 degrees and that and that and that and that and that easy okay now if I do another ray up here In order to keep going across at 90 degrees, the ray has to bend a bit, okay, so that it keeps, and even then I haven't quite bent it enough actually, so it keeps crossing at 90 degrees. So in the wavefront representation, we see these blue wavefronts going through the gap and spreading out. If we were to represent it with rays, then the rays start off parallel to each other on the left hand side of the screen here moving along 
when they go through the gap and diffract the waves diverge a bit and they end up spreading out and this is exactly what happens with light which is what we usually represent with 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 uh, rays so if you've seen light go through if you've seen like laser light if your teacher's demonstrated like I have laser light going through a thin slit okay you have like a, a laser beam here shining onto a slit you'll know that when it gets to the other side of the room okay it's spread out so the light that's gone through here whoops wrong color the light that's gone through here hasn't just gone straight on like this it's spread out a bit okay you have to get quite far away to notice that it's spread out so the screen would have been the screen that the, the laser light went onto would have been quite far away a good few meters away but you'll notice that that light that laser light has spread out now obviously that's not the way we represent it with scribbles and stuff like that no we represent light often with rays now those rays when they go through the slit the gap bends slightly change direction okay and if we were to represent it with wave fronts the wave fronts here they would actually be much closer together than this by the way even closer together than this the wave fronts here start off as totally straight lines and then here they'd be ever so slightly curved but because the, the the amount of diffraction is so so small here the curvature would be very hard to notice so wave fronts and rays you can use them both to represent the same thing okay so what you need to be able to do is represent loads of processes with either wave fronts or rays so if I were to say to you what about reflection of light at a mirror okay and if I were to send in three rays you'd be totally fine you'd be like okay well put in some normals whoops this one doesn't go all the way when light reflects the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection so these are going to reflect off probably something like this all well and good we're familiar but if I then said okay represent that with wave fronts coming in I'm just going to do them in between what would happen well I'll leave you to think about that likewise if you were to do refraction let's say this is some glass and we had some light rays coming in you know what's going to happen they're going to refract towards the normal familiar what about if I said represent that with wave fronts so this is something to think about okay uh, what's going to happen here uh, and you need to be able to draw these diagrams reasonably accurately so in the lesson we'll look at um, representing reflection and refraction with wave fronts and see what the diagrams look like right hopefully that's a brief introduction anyway to wave fronts and rays remember wave fronts are always perpendicular to rays so if you know what the wave fronts are doing you can work out what the rays are doing conversely if you know what the rays are doing you can work out what the wave fronts are doing